All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And I promised that I wasn't going to do this video because I feel like this video has been overdone uh, this holiday season. But people are asking and saying, can you please? And so we're going to do it. And that is the Christmas balls. These are the cheapest glass Christmas balls that I could find at Walmart. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to put a mark, engrave, whatever you wanna call it, on the ball and then backfill it with paint. Now, this is all over the internet. People are doing it a thousand different ways. Typically they're using the F1 or the F1 Ultra all these different machines. So I decided at least I would use a different machine. So today we're gonna to be using the MK2 from Roly, uh, the Lasermatic 30 watt. And we're gonna turn it down to 10 power so that you guys with blue diodes that are running, you know, 10 watt blue diodes can follow along with the video as well. So we're gonna do it with a 10 watt diode guys, not a 20 watt fiber. So. Stick around and we're gonna make some decorative Christmas balls. So here we go. All right guys, so here we are over at the Rolly MK2. I've got it switched over to 10 watts uh, for this job because to do these guys, you don't need a whole lot of power. Uh, so if you're somebody who has a machine that's a five or a 10 watt, go ahead and get yourself some of these because it doesn't take a whole lot to engrave these and make these really cool. So the one thing that I've been trying out is with the Chuck, uh, with the MK2, I'm not really having a big issue with it, uh, but if you're having a hard time with your little fingers on your machine holding the ball, because you can do this with, like I said, any machine, whether it be an Atom Stack, X Tool, it, it doesn't matter. As long as you've got a machine, uh, you can do it without a chuck, but in order to get that good wrap effect, you're gonna need a chuck. But if you're having problems with the balls being gripped, you can take these off. And if you, if you take those off, you can take a rubber band like so, and just wrap this rubber band around the neck of the ornament. And this is gonna serve two purposes. Uh, for this is one, it's gonna enhance the chuck's ability to hold on to the ball because now it's got a rubbery surface to grip. And uh, of course we put rubber tires on our cars to keep them on the roadway. So it's gonna enhance the grip that the chuck has on the Christmas ball. And another thing that it'll do is in the event that, let's say if I can get this one to go on here, it's, it's been a little stubborn. In the event that you were to over tighten the chuck just a little bit, or let's say your chuck is built a little differently. If you apply too much pressure to this edge of this glass right here, you can fracture the ball. And if it starts here, of course, it's just gonna be like your windshield or your car, the whole thing's gonna fall apart. So by adding the rubber band to the neck right here, you can also give yourself something to kind of grip with the, uh, with the little pins on here. Uh, with the RA2, I did find that the rubber helped out a lot because those little stainless steel uh, pins that come with the RA2 didn't want to grip this as well. And these are cheap Christmas balls, so they're not exactly perfectly circular. Some of them have bad shoulders. It's just a train wreck. So by putting the rubber band on there, what that does is it enables you to back open, open up your chuck. And I'm going to do this one with rubber bands on it just to show you. And then you just tighten it down until you get it good and snug on the rubber bands. Now the rubber bands are gonna allow it to wiggle a little bit if it needs to, but that's what's gonna keep you from busting them with the chuck. You're not gonna need to really snug these things down. I would actually, unless you just have to, if you have like diminished strength in your hands or something, I would stay away from using the chuck key uh, because if you tighten them too tight, you're, you're gonna bust these things. So I do them by hand anyway, but I'm just, rocking on there best I can by hand. You wanna make sure it's not gonna move, that it's somewhat secure. And then once you get that on there, you're ready to go. So being that this is the MK2, we've gotta run this with light burn. So I'm gonna get over to the computer, set up the engrave, and we'll send it and show you what it looks like. All right, so I'm gonna be running current position on this. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you have the laser module in the middle 
on both the X and Y axis uh, to try to get it directly down into the ball. So I've got that set up. I do have my focus set, but I raised my focus maybe two millimeters to avoid any fracturing of the glass. So I, I would recommend you do that. Raise the focus up two to three millimeters on this. So let's get over to the computer. All right, so we're over here in Lightburn, guys. I've got this laid out. I went ahead and captured an image earlier so that I could just have the view of the chuck and everything in the workspace. Be sure whenever you're setting up your file to orient it correctly towards the top uh, in this situation, that's gonna be back this way. That's the reason I like having a photo of whatever it is. I don't use it for the engrave, but it just helps me remember which way to orient stuff uh, when I'm setting it up. Now, I will tell you, that I want that to go a little bit further that way in the real world, but it's all gonna not gonna matter about what it looks like here because I'm running current position. I recommend with these balls that you run current uh, position on your machine. That way, wherever, and, and I'll go ahead and, oops, let me, I'll go ahead and make this look the way it actually looks in the real world over there. So the way this is actually laid out is gonna be like this. The Laser is currently on the green dot there because I'm in current position. All right, I have created this box right here, which is actually two boxes uh, in order to keep uh, the spacing correct. The one thing that you're gonna need to know is how big is this, this ball right here. When you're setting your chuck up, that's you're gonna put that in here. These are 64 millimeters round, thereabouts. Probably 65, but I'm gonna go with 64 just because that was, it was 64 and some change. Uh, so we're gonna go with 64 millimeters on these, all right? The circumference, this uh, software, Lightburn does the math for you. The circumference is 201.062. If you'll notice, these little boxes that I have right here are 100.5 millimeters in height, which basically just means that if I've got two of those boxes, that brings me to the 201 millimeters circumference, which means that each one of these boxes is half, is one hemisphere or half of this, uh, this circle. And so I'm centering this graphic on one side, one side of the circle and this graphic on the other. All I do is I use these little boxes. Basically, I'll click on the, the graphic and then I'll click on these little boxes and just use the zeroing tool there to make sure that those are aligned properly. And that lets me know that I have the correct amount of spacing uh, between these so that they're not touching each other or overlapping each other. So once you've got all that set up, like I said, you just derive all of that information from the circumference or object diameter. It'll tell you what the circumference is. You take the circumference, divide that by two. That gives you two equal parts. In this case, they're 100.5 millimeters each. And I drew the boxes just to align everything. So it's that simple. So now, like I said, current position i've got my speed and power here set at 300 millimeters per second 100 percent power i am running air assist there's really that that doesn't matter if you have air assist or not this is just that's out of habit because of uh the fact that i always run air assist constant power not sure why that got turned on but you do not need that hardly ever uh and i'm going to run my lpi at 200 just because i want to get a little more definition and i am running this in 10 watt and so I'm gonna be able to get a little better clarity running at 10 watt as I would 30. So there we go. And uh, once we do all that, we're just gonna hit start and you'll be able to watch the uh, B-roll over here of this engrave. So here we go. And you will get this warning when you run uh, current position, but just hit yes, as long as you're sure <laughs> nothing's out of the work area. All right, guys, so that one finished up, and uh, we're going to go over to painting next. So let's shut the machine off so it'll quieten down a little bit, and uh, we'll get it over there and get it painted. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, guys, you can see it's not all that noticeable. I mean, you can tell it's been engraved. Basically, what it did is it removed that red paint off or, or silver red 
looking paint off the inside. Uh, and so I'm gonna pull my handy dandy uh, rubber band off of there. This is just some folk art uh, acrylic paint. This is just tube paint. I got this, this big box of this stuff at Walmart. Got it really cheap. Uh, you're gonna wanna put some inside the ornament. Now, you're gonna have to be pretty generous with this, so uh, if you're doing a bunch of these, you're gonna wanna get you a, a good amount of, uh, of paint. Now, the objective is to get that paint that we just put in there to fill that little white mirror type area. And as you can see, the paint's kind of thick. So yeah, could you possibly sit here and toss it around and get the paint everywhere? Maybe. Uh, I'm going to speed it up by using a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Uh, I'm just going to kind of spray it inside the uh, ornament to kind of cut that paint and make it a little thinner. Uh, this is acrylic paint, so you could use water if you wanted. Uh, but I'm using, I'm going to use the rubbing alcohol because I'm hoping that in using a little bit of rubbing alcohol, maybe it won't take as long uh, for it to dry. And it is being stubborn. So basically, I'm just putting my finger over the tip, over the hole here, which is going to get a little paint on it. Uh, I'm just shaking. And that's, that's pretty much the story. That's what, I mean, everybody that you see doing these, that's pretty much the thing. Now, there are other things that you could do. You can get a paintbrush. Uh, and try to reach in there with a paintbrush, that would probably work. Uh, I have actually used spray paint and sprayed it in there. Uh, that works as well. There is a risk for making a mess, a little more so with the spray paint than there is with the acrylic paint, because acrylic paint, you can pretty much get it off of water. Uh, so that's not as big of a mess potential as the spray paint is. Uh, you do, I do find that I get a little darker, or a little brighter results using the spray paint. Uh, just because of the pigment, I guess, is better than the acrylic paint. But after a few moments of vigorously shaking, uh, I've, got, I've got a little more definition, a little, little better look on that side. Uh, like I said, the, the two different sides, they're not exactly working out as well. Uh, like one side's getting a little better coating than the other. Uh, another way that I had thought about you could do with these uh, is you could you could take and get cotton balls and stuff cotton balls down in there and twist them with a stick. I mean, there are ways that you could do a little better job of getting the paint in there, but then you you, you start getting into more materials. So this seems to be the most popular method. It just takes a lot of shaking. Uh, and also, if you get the paint too thin, then you're gonna have the problem of as it dries, your paint's gonna flow back down uh, and leave a thin layer of paint on the engrave. So there's a lot of things to consider when doing this. It's not as just, you know, simple as you would think it would be. So I'm gonna sit here and vigorously shake my ornament for a few more minutes until I get it like I like it. So we'll be back. All right, guys, so as you can see, it turned out really well. Uh, the paint, like I said, it's a lot of shaking goes into the painting. Uh, so uh, it, you're going to find that, that, that just right viscosity for the paint to where you don't have to shake too hard, but it's not too soupy. So there's a bit of a balance there. Uh, and uh, as always, if, it, if, you, if you overdo it and you make it too thin, just add a little more paint to it to thicken it up. It's kind of like making gravy. Uh, just add a little flour <laughs> and thicken it up. But once you find the right consistency and you're shaking it enough, uh, you'll get uh, similar results to that right there. So it turned out really well, considering that I bought this whole thing now. I've used most of them up. I've either broken them or uh, used them up in this video. I paid $4 for the whole box of ornaments, and I wound up with like three usable ones out of the whole thing. So... With a little work and a little patience, you could come up with some pretty interesting and some pretty cool gift ideas. Uh, like I said, this side over here seems to me to be a little wider than the other side, but economical little project. Uh, like I said, you can do it on any, any laser for the most part. Uh, because of the way these are, it's real thin glass, uh, so either an IR or a diode, a uh, blue diode, a 450 nanometers machine can do them. CO2s can do them. Now with the CO2, you may actually frost the glass 
and you may have more of a chance of, of cracking uh, this real thin glass because the CO2 will actually engrave the glass. But with the, uh, whether you're using a fiber machine, a Galvo, whether it's a blue or whether it's a 1064, you can do this kind of work on these things and use this technique. Like I said, there's a lot of videos out there on it, guys. Mine's not the only one. Go check them out, find one you like, and uh, go for it. But this just goes to show you five watt, 10 watt guys, hey, this is a project that you can do. So uh, like I said, if you have any ideas, guys, drop it in the comments. Let me know what you thought about the video. And I will be putting links to the Roly MK2 in there if you're interested in it. And until next time, be safe, have a good day.